2.4 million people are incarcerated in the U.S. today. What's even crazier is that 113 million people in the U.S. are affected by people that are incarcerated. If 113 million people are negatively affected by somebody's incarceration, what would happen if we could have them be positively impacted? Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, you're going to get a behind the scenes look into my book launch. And I think it's going to be really eye opening for you. Hopefully, it's going to be like a holy stirring inside of you to get involved with what I have going on. Okay. I'm going to take you back to where it all began for me and why I even wanted to write a book of this magnitude in the first place. So, If you've been around for a long time, you probably know a little bit of my story, but I'm going to reshare it (laughs) for some of you that are listening in that might be new. But I was raised by a single mom, and I think it's really important that people know that because your childhood makes up who you are as an adult. It's where you learn your coping mechanisms. It's where you build your money beliefs. Your subconscious mind is formed by the time you're seven years old. So you have thoughts and beliefs really around every area of life by the time you are seven. And a lot of people don't work on changing their subconscious. And so we, a lot of times, get stuck making decisions from our seven-year-old self. It's crazy, but if you think about that right now, Think about what was happening for you when you were seven years old. So for me, at that time, my mom was working so hard. She was a hairstylist and she was a hairstylist assistant. So she would work four days a week, completely full time, like 12 hours a day, blow drying hair for this guy that really took care of her. And then on the weekends, she would do hair in our garage and just try to do anything to like pay the bills to keep the house. And she even like at one point was like a telemarketer too on Sundays. Like it was crazy. This this woman was busy. So that was the type of like work ethic I saw is just work hard (laughs) all the time. Okay. That was what was represented to me by a woman. So it was really important to point out. Then on the other hand, the man that was in my life was not really in my life. He was in jail. My dad And my mom got divorced when I was five because my dad was a drug addict. And what's crazy is like when my mom met my dad, he was already a drug addict. And they met at a bar. And my mom goes, I just felt bad for him and I wanted to fix him. And so she married him. My mom and I like laugh about it now because it was like not not really like a great choice. But I'm happy you married him because obviously I'm here (laughs) and my, my little brother's here too. But they really struggled. And, you know, my dad really fought this addiction hard. And when I was five, it really overcame him. And he was taken to jail because of crimes that he committed, like under the influence, like doing bad stuff. I still don't know all the details of why he was incarcerated then. But that was really my childhood is my dad was in and out of jail. And I remember I was always happiest when I would get a letter from my dad in jail because I knew he was safe and I didn't have to worry about him when he was in jail. And that was really my story until I was 16. He got out and he started running marathons and he really like started to be healthier, you know, like he went from one extreme, like drug addict to over here, like marathon runner, like he used to say carbs are poison, like he wouldn't touch carbs. So we started running together and really like created a relationship and Uh, then I remember my graduation from high school, he was supposed to come and he didn't show up. And I just like knew, I was like, oh, he's back on drugs. And that was really my reality. And it still is a reality today because he's still an addict that struggles to this very day in his late sixties. And I always tell him, dad, like God has such a big plan for you. The fact that you're still alive, like it's crazy. But I have such a heart for incarcerated people because, you know, my dad just didn't have like the coping mechanisms or the skills to come 
out into the real world and really make something really great out of his life without committing crimes. So 2.4 million people are incarcerated in the U.S. today. Okay, and out of those, 90% of those 2.4 million people will get out someday. And they have to go and learn how to do life in the real world without going back to their old ways. And this is what's crazy. It's like when they get out, all they know is the people that they <laughs> you know, knew before. And so it's really hard for them to go out and create a new network when they have a record and, you know, People that are like good people don't trust them anymore because they've screwed them over. And there's all this stuff that's going up against them. Okay. And what's even crazier is that 113 million people in the US are affected by people that are incarcerated. So, you know, think about somebody like me. My mom was affected by it. All of my dad's brothers and sisters were affected by his incarceration you know, his cousins, like there's it, the ripple effect that happens when somebody's incarcerated. It, it's it's so wide. We don't even understand it. And because I really saw my dad struggle and I always had like a heart for him, like I love him so much still to this day. Like I have so much compassion for him because I really view like addiction as a disease. And I know he's like trying to like overcome it. But I thought like, what if there's a way that we could help people when they're incarcerated, really gain the skills to make it out in the real world. So I like to think about it like their street hustle got them in to prison most of the time. But what if we could turn that same like street hustle? Okay, because they know how to work hard. These addicts, I mean, they, oh my goodness, they know how to work hard <laughs> to get the, their next fix. Okay, what if we could turn that hustle into a holy hustle? And uh, I started to think about like, how could I get this mission that I have to help incarcerated people, which will ultimately affect the children of the incarcerated people, which is where my heart is. How do I get that <laughs> with my book? Because my book is called, What Do You Really Want? Right? It's a take seven guide to ultimately getting everything you want in life. So, okay, how do those two go together? Right? And I started to pray about it. I was working with my PR team. And I'm like, how do we help this? And we decided the biggest thing that we could do was, first of all, donate my book to people in prison. Okay, so that way they can have something to learn this take seven coaching method and really apply it to start like living the life that God really has for them. One of like abundance and purity and and just like happiness and joy and so much fulfillment, right? And we're gonna give them books. But then we said, okay, There has to be something more because they need to have a network. They need to have people that breathe life into them, people that believe into them. And they also need to like learn the skills of being an entrepreneur because most of these people are not going to be able to go and get a good paying job with a record. So the best thing they can do is start a business. And so we decided to create an incredible opportunity for people to go in to the prisons And we have opportunities all over the U.S. to do this in both men's and women prisons, okay? Go in there and help them become entrepreneurs. So these incarcerated people will go through a training called Entrepreneurs in Training. So they'll learn a lot of skills through the course that they're gonna take. But we also get to go in there and coach them on bringing their business idea to life. And we're gonna do it all throughout 2024. Right now, I only have a couple spots left. So if you're interested in being able to help these people get a business going and really give back with your time and your expertise to really change the world, like can you imagine if 113 million people are negatively affected by somebody's incarceration, what would happen if we could have them be positively impacted? Because they can start their business while they're in jail. They can start making money for their families and being able to take care of their kids that are usually like neglected because of their incarceration. So it just gets me so excited. If you're interested, go to craftedoffer.com. Check out everything we have going on with this because you can also donate books to them, but you can also come, you know, and have this transformative experience mentoring these inmates, showing them how to use entrepreneurship to change their lives, to better 
their lives. And, you know, you become what you surround yourself with. And a lot of people, like I talked to my dad about this, you know, what was his childhood like? Well, he grew up without a dad. He was fatherless and he just wanted to fit in and he never felt like he fit in. He was an immigrant from Mexico and, you know, his mom, you know, and his brothers and sisters, like everybody spoke Spanish. They didn't really like fit in. And so he always would like make bad decisions to try to fit in. And so it's like, what if we could really help people start like, healing the roots of why they do these dumb things that they do, they'll start making like better decisions. And that's really what we get to do is go into these prisons and help them heal parts of them that they haven't been like willing to really face. So that way, when they start to go out into the real world, they're going to have better coping mechanisms, right? So make sure to go to craftedoffer.com and join me on this mission. And if you're like, Kayla, I don't know if I could do that. Maybe it hits, you know, a little too close to home. You know, you can also just donate books. That would be a huge help. So make sure to go to craftedoffer.com. Anything counts. $500 actually will help an inmate take the entire entrepreneur course for three months. So it doesn't take a lot of money to help these people. So thank you so much for listening in and I hope you enjoyed learning about how we can help incarcerated people. Thank you.